time to start our service. If everybody would have a seat. I want to welcome everybody to Kenley Missionary Baptist Church this morning. Um, if you're a visitor, please let us know at the end of the program, and we'd like to give you a little gift bag and some um, other items that you can sign up to give us some information on yourself. We'd, we'd love to have you back here again. I do see we have two little visitors here today, but they're my girls from Storm and Norman. So. See, I'll make them feel real welcome. Okay, good to see y'all too. Um, we'll start this morning with the announcements, and we'll get those over. I'll probably do these things a whole lot quicker than Dario does, and we, you know, we'll be on with the program. Um, today, we start Bible school. At what time? Supper is at 5.30, and age groups start at 6.15. So if you want a free meal, 5.30, and then if you want to work with the Lord, 6.15, okay? We're expecting a big turnout. I know that the girls have worked really hard on it. Um, Y'all look at Jessica. She looks like she needs a battery charger hooked up to her. She's, she's really feeling down, but it is a lot of hard work, and we appreciate what y'all have done. We're um, the numbers look really off this morning. We do have a bunch that have gone camping. We are in the summer period, so we do um, pray and ask that as each of you see members and you see people that come to church here, and you're not seeing them on a regular basis, please invite them back. You know that's all our jobs. All of us are um, disciples, and it's all our jobs to find out, hey, why aren't you coming back, or are you going anywhere, if you disconnected with the Lord, because you've got the most important news here to tell them about in the world, more than the stock market, more than the NBA finals, more than what's going to happen in the first grade next year, so um, encourage your friends to come, because that's on you, if they're your friend, and you've got access to them, God expects you to do that. Um, our next announcement, no worship service today, of course. Um, tomorrow morning, WMU morning circle at 945. Monday night, you can see the schedule of 530 um, vacation Bible school supper and 615 classes start. So it'll be that way through Thursday. Will that be right? Thursday night will be the last night. Okay. If any of you aren't signed up to come or be a part of or help for Vacation Bible School, um, please do so. If you can't come out here but one night, it would be a, you know, it'd, it'd be a blessing to you, I'm sure, and you'd be a blessing to somebody else. So um, try and try to let everybody else know about it, but but do try to come, please. And. If you signed up to help with Vacation Bible School, please pick, pick up your T-shirt in the children's church room after first service. So if you had not got your T-shirt yet and you signed up to help, you need to pick it up in the children's church room after the first service. I guess um, you'll have that for them. Okay, Jessica will have that for you. Does anybody have anything else they would like to announce any other sort of announcements if not we're going to let the praise man kick it a little bit and then they'll tell me what to do next go <laughs> let's, uh, let's, let's join our heads in in prayer this morning just to get things going it feels a little like we need some prayer time let's pray Lord God, we just come to you now, we just lift you up, and we just want to thank you for this beautiful day and for allowing us to be able to come out here and worship, and uh, oh, you are so amazing, and we're so thankful for um, just how wonderful you are for all the blessings you bestow upon us, Lord, the, the health and the happiness you give us, Lord, the, the comfort that you deliver all the time, and we just want to come right now and 
lift you up and, and just um, thank you again for this time you've given us to just express our love and care and worship for you as Lord, as, as Lord and Savior of our lives. Thank you. Uh, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, let's stand up and, and sing some songs to our Lord and Savior. Uh, first is the stand. for us he gave us all for he sacrificed his only son so that we could understand what uh, the freedom from death is not to feel it sting <coughs> man his love never fails he's always there even on the tough mornings even on those times whenever you're out of your comfort zone you know God is right there with you saying you got this I got this for you you know heard some people talking at the gym the other day about how God will never give you anything more than you can handle is not really in the Bible and um, you know sometimes God does give you things that you can handle because he knows you're going to lean upon him so you know what I mean so it's, it's kind of a, a little bit of a of a gray area. Lean upon me. I'll make your burdens easy. But, uh, you know, whatever's bothering you or concerning you today, know that no matter what, one thing will always remain is love will never fail. Your love never fails. 
that never gives up, it never runs out on me. The love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. The love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. The love.
Jesus' name. Y'all yeah, feel like sometimes in the mornings, um, you know, we just don't get into the worship like we used to. And we really need to, we need the spirit in here. Bring the spirit in here with you. Don't leave him outside the door. Leave him in your heart and, and keep him with you all the time. Don't be ashamed. Jesus says, you know, if you're going to be ashamed of me, deny me before men, I'm going to certainly deny you. I don't want to be denied by my Jesus. Um, a lot of times we don't feel good when we're coming here. But God, when we leave here, we ought to be feeling real good. We ought to be walking on clouds because we have that glorious hope that heaven is going to be ours and we're going to be a part of it and we're going to be in it. That's left up to each one of you individually with your walk for Christ. All I can do is, is walk mine and mine gets crooked sometimes. But God forgives me and um, I try not to walk that same crooked path day after day and time after time and I try to learn. Hope all of you will do the same. But really, God, when we're in here, this isn't a place to keep your emotions in. It's a place where you can speak freely to God. And you can raise your hands and you can, I'm starting to sound like a Pentecostal, I know. But, but still, you know, my, my point is, if we make our kids think that we can't worship our God in church. And I know I got whoopings every Sunday for acting up. But, and I did dance then, but we can put a whole lot more spirit into what we're doing. And um, I think this week is going to show with Vacation Bible School what we really need for this church. You know, we need more youth. We need to be gearing as much that way as we do towards our older members because the youth are the future of the church and what we teach them and how we get them in here. And um, we really need to be praying and thinking about that, even with a search for a senior pastor. Um, you know, we, we've, we're, we've been taken care of so far. Anyway, I wanted to get that off my mind. Let's, you know, don't have to be all glum-faced. People don't like coming in and seeing a bunch of sour-faced people. And that's all. Oh, them people eat lemons. Them people eat lemons before they went to church this morning. All bit of lemon, all bit of lemon. Well, let's, let's smile, okay, even if it hurts. Anyway, love y'all, and if you would, Johnny. Just a reminder, uh, if you have a burden on your heart, you have a spirit thing, that you want to call us, and uh, we will pray over you, and you'll call us, and we'll come up with a little bit more statement of need to be about it. Heavenly Father, we just, once again, just thank you for the wonderful opportunity to come to a building that has air conditioning, light, has carpet on, underneath our feet, Father. Hallelujah. Um, we've changed up a little bit of the slides, so if we had slides prepared, this is going to be different. So I didn't have a chance to tell the, uh, the group in the sound booth. But uh, if you know the song you want to sing along with us, you can. We're, we're uh, changing it up a little bit, stepping out of our comfort zone. So, and uh, singing some, a new 
song, or uh, an old song in a new way. Lucky didn't understand. I was wanting to jump up and grab the mic and do that ah, ah with me. Ah, you know, I'm gonna get the nerve up one time. We get over here with Kevin. We're gonna we're gonna do that. Anyway, it sounds like the song was very appropriate um, for what we're about to hear. We're gonna be hearing from our um, mission group. That what are they? Oh yeah, everybody go to children's church. We're gonna go. Okay, I've done everything now but announce the speakers, and I'm going to do that in just a second. Um, we've been blessed to have a group that, that was able to go um, overseas and witness for the Lord. Um, 
not too very long ago, and we're so happy that they made it back um, with no Ebola or they didn't bring a bad mosquito or nothing home with them. And um, they got back through, and it looks like they, they've got their hats and their shirts today, and we're going to let Mr. Ruff and Miss Mary and we're going to let them tell their story and tell what they saw and how God was moving over in Kenya. Um, while they're doing that, I want each one of you to think today, if you leave this place, if you leave this church, you have an aneurysm, you have a heart attack, you have a head-on collision, whatever delivery system God uses to take you to wherever you go, are you ready to go in the right direction? Is your heart where it needs to be? Have you asked Jesus to be your Savior? You know, this past week a lot of people went to the Maker, and I'm not sure which direction they went. And I can just know which direction I'm going, but... Um, I pray that y'all will think about that today before you leave here, too. And remember, this altar is open. And um, here comes our Kenya people. I'm getting on down, and I'm going to turn the service over to them. Thank you, all Thank you, Pro. This morning, I just want to say thank you on behalf of Udawala Baptist Church for the uh, support, your, the prayers, the finances, making a trip to Kenya possible. And this morning we're blessed. This service is going international. I have heard from Kenya and they are watching even at this moment. Thanks to Facebook and streaming and all that kind of technical stuff. But let me say Habari Asabui. Oh, okay. So, so Habari Asabui is to say hello. If you are in Kenya and someone says Habari Asabui, you say Nzuri Sana. Nzuri Sana, everything is fine. It doesn't matter if you have a stick in the eye, you have an abscessed tooth, your mother in law just moved in long term, everything is fine. But everything was fine on our trip. One thing we learned. That repeated us something that Mary and I have been told time and time again, be flexible. We went during the rainy season. We had a list of things from here to there we were going to do. And God said, no, this is what you're going to do. So we're going to take you to Kenya this morning. The presentation runs chronologically through, and we'll all just... Uh, chime in when we feel we have something to share. Oh, by the way, the clothes are courtesy of Imelda in Kenya. I looked at my shirt when I first got it. I said, boy, that's loud. But then I looked at the other two and I said, it's fine. Are you ready? Yeah. Is this working? Yes, it is. Okay, we're about to leave. We're hijacking two puppets to go to Kenya along with us. We put them in a suitcase, kind of look like a coffin with the two puppets in it. But. So now we're going to go to Kenya. And I want to show you what the road looks like. This is on the way to church from the hotel. There is a Kenyan proverb, if you see a pothole ahead, and there are ears visible out of the pothole. It's not a rabbit, it's a giraffe. <laughs> One thing I want to say quickly. Um, the people in Udawala were asking about each one that visited with us the last time. And they were praying that they would come back the next time we go. There's a few cows having a snack at the side of the road. And that's all trash, by the way. I thought that was 
like if you if you left trash on the side of the road here, you probably wouldn't have any money left because the state would fine you so much. That's uh, Udawala Baptist Church. As it stands today, they have started building the second floor. We will share more about that later, but it was a real honor to go back to the church again. And standing right in front is the first pastor, which is this man right here. Mary and I had the honor of planting uh, Udawala Baptist Church. As many of you know, we were in Kenya for seven years. And about the second year in, we were blessed. We were able to plant Udawala Baptist Church. They are now on about an acre and a quarter of land, and they are, they are building. And they are looking to do great things for the kingdom of God in Kenya. See, inside of the church, it's a little deceptive. It's a panoramic view, so it makes it look very much larger than it is, although it is a good-sized building. And it's a very well-built building, too, for what's around there. One of our first days there, a little boy came up to me, and he said, we're having a wedding. I said, you are? And that was all that was said about it until... <laughs> That's a picture of the school building looking from the front porch of the church. The, uh, looking at it, the right half of the building has been uh, built by funds that were provided through Kenley Missionary Baptist Church. That is jo Joy Lee, Joylene, excuse me, Pastor Timothy's four-year-old daughter. That is cake frosting on her face. She doesn't have leprosy. <laughs> that is cake frosting. It was her fourth, fourth birthday while we were there, and uh, she enjoyed her cake. So now we're going to talk about um, Vacation Bible School. And so this is all the kids playing at game time. I don't know if you can see them all, but they're playing tug of war. You go, go world, world around and they play the same games. They have the same joy and they have the same need for Jesus Christ that we have here. Volleyball, the net you're looking at and uh, the, the ball was again provided this trip through the funds that you provided to enable us to go to Kenya. Put to good use. Very good use. We even had a Matthew playing volleyball while we were there. And there's me and Mary doing the puppets. Um, we every every day we had vacation Bible school. We um, we did like two or what was it like two or three songs yeah. with the puppets, and they were just so mesmerized by not just not because we were they weren't looking at us. They were looking at the puppets, like how how it made like just blown away by it. I think we have a, yeah. Just to bring, put things in perspective, a, to a Kenyan child, a box of crayons is every bit as good as an iPad. This was our second day, and they thought we needed a screen in front of us for the puppets, so they held up this board. I don't know where they got it from, but they We're, we're it still up. trying to figure out why it's not all the way painted either. Yeah, we didn't know it was just leaning up against the wall. And the side by us wasn't painted at all, so we don't understand that. Lady and gentlemen, it's a Kenyan thing. <laughs> this is uh, the group that I had the pleasure of teaching. Uh, every day I had a helper. One day it was uh, Matthew helped me. Another day it was a brother by the name of Reuben, and here I believe it is Pastor Timothy. The day that, Tim, uh, that uh, Matthew helped me, I said, well, how'd I do, Matthew? He said, well, at least nobody fell asleep. <laughs> but every day we, we, we preached on being a, taught on being a vessel of honor. We 
we taught on uh, the uh, Ruth, on the uh, full armor of God, and, and it was a real blessing. The, people, the group I taught, I, I taught on Jesus from Genesis 3.15 to the last book of Revelation, and uh, it was a real blessed, blessed time. And this is in my room. We were in one of the rooms in the school building, and it just it kind of mesmerized me, like how much they like to work. They love to color. They love to do word searches. They love to read out of the Bible. They love to do all of it. So it was it was very it was very humbling for me. It is hard to get them out during playtime to lay down the crayons and the books. They want to learn. This is a young lady holding up the book that we did when we did Noah's Ark. They had to color the ark, and then we had brought with us um, animals that had sticky backs. And all the girls wanted the nice animals. The boys all wanted the alligators and crocodiles and all that kind of stuff. But they colored them and stuck these on. And we were at a home just before we left, and the girl's digging in a closet. She says, look what I have. She had every paper that she had done at Vacation Bible School. And this is the group that I had in the school. Of course, Pastor Timothy got in on that picture. But the schoolroom was very dark. And I sat with my back to the door, and I had to hold my Bible up so I could see the light coming in the door to be able to read my Bible. And this is my class. We were on the other end of the school building. And it's this, it was the same way in our room. We had bigger windows, but it was still, it was still hard to see, especially one day where it was really cloudy because it was raining. And... It was, it, like I said, it was hard to see in there. So, and then the other one is, this is. That's, that's again, the, the older group that I had the pleasure of being with three days. And it was a real blessing. We averaged about 65 children every day. There's Pastor Timothy. He did a my, selfie. <laughs> it's a selfie of Pastor Timothy. He had my phone as the camera. He would run around and take pictures. I don't think he really understood that he'd take a picture in either direction. And I have about 12 selfies of Pastor Timothy. <laughs> okay, in order to get on the plane to come home, this, is, this held true in 2014 as well, you had to kiss a, kiss a giraffe to get a plane, on the plane to go home. Audria and Janice and uh, Jackie and Terry and uh, Brother Wesley, they all kissed the giraffe. So we told Matthew, same thing, you're the rookie, you gotta kiss a giraffe. <laughs> so, so he had to assure Savannah that there was no lasting relationship there. <laughs> but nonetheless, we all manned up and ladied up and kissed a giraffe. We have the evidence. The interesting thing when we were there the last time. <laughs> when we were there the last time and Tanya kissed the giraffe, she said the tongue is just like a cow tongue. How many cows has Tanya kissed? That's what I want to know. <laughs> but it was a fun time. We had plans to try to do more sightseeing, but because of the rain, we couldn't. We had the one day when we went to see the giraffes and the uh, Kazori jewelry uh, ministry, but we just had to adjust because God had other plans. This was our celebration for our 50th wedding anniversary. Unbeknownst to us, they had these cakes for us. They had decorated the church. We walked in, obviously, before all the service started, and the two of us were just overwhelmed with what they had done with the church. But these were the cakes that they had for us. 
That's uh, Mary and myself. It's a little dark in the picture. Our best couple, which would be the best man and maid of honor, because they did this as an African wedding. It was an entire wedding. And uh, Brother Elias and his dear wife Susan stood up with Mary and I. The uh, gentleman preaching is uh, Pastor Patero, a man, godly man that Mary and I have known the entire time we were in Kenya. We preached in his church and taught in his church a number of times. And he just blessed blessed us that day. Bibles. One of our main thrusts when we went to Kenya was to distribute Bibles. Many of you supported us and the ministry, and uh, we thank you for that. We said a Bible would cost about eight bucks. We got eight dollars, excuse my slang. We got to Nairobi and we found out they were thirteen dollars. We went to the Bible Society of Kenya, tried to, uh, tried to buy Maasai, Swahili, and English Bibles, the three languages that we minister in there. But there were no Maasai Bibles available. They all come from, uh, I believe they said Japan or Taiwan. They were planted, printed in the Orient, shipped to Africa. Why they do that, I don't know, but that's the way it is. So we got English and Swahili Bibles, but Brother Elias bargained tough with the uh, people, and we, we got them for about $10. So we weren't able to distribute as many as we would have liked, but there's a pile on the floor. We're waiting for the uh, transportation to come back, and uh, Matthew and I, Mary set the trip out. She had been there a number of times. Well, I had to set the trip out because of the vehicle, well, we'll get, we'll get into the Mercedes-Benz that we were so traveling in. The four men went, Russ, Matthew, Pastor Timothy, and Elias, to get the Bibles. Okay, we, we had a little bit of rain while we were there. If you look back behind that man, it looks like a river flowing left to right. That's what it was. And how many of you would have driven through that to get to church this morning? We did. What did you say, Matthew, when we went, when we saw that? I said, we're going through that? <laughs> he said, if it was here in the United States, you'd turn around and go back home. However, we went through. So I was waiting for the water to start coming through the door. We, we did see some serious rain. And I think because of that because that same day we went through that our transportation broke down so this was our vehicle that that's our mercedes benz let me qualify this you did not send us to africa for us to ride around in a mercedes benz that is a very african mercedes benz approximately 1980 35 40 years old the only thing that worked in the car was the engine, and it didn't sound like it was to be working much longer. The windows would go, not go up and down. There was no air, no ventilation. That's why Mary decided, I'll sit this one out. And you don't want to sit in Nairobi traffic in that either. What's next? Uh, my favorite part. Okay, this is all yours, brother. So... When we went, you know, it, it, probably all of you know, I'm the chairman of the AV committee, so don't hold that against me. Um, one of the things I wanted to do was further enhance, in some way, their AV equipment, whatever they had. I didn't know what they had, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't really expect them to have anything. Well, they, they do have stuff, and... I was, I looked around and they really don't have, they really didn't have anything in terms of like speakers for, to project out like these do up here. So I pitched the idea to Elias of getting speakers and hanging them on the wall on either side of the stage. And of course he loved the idea. So... 
I was thinking, you know, I'm going to probably only be able to get one speaker, and then we'll hang the other one they got on the wall with it. Well, we went into Nairobi the first time, and I found out that Nairobi is, a, is terrible for traffic. And we went to this shop that sells speakers, and I was able to buy two brand new speakers through the money that was given to us here at KMBC. And we were able to buy new speaker wires. And this picture was the day of the wedding. And I think it was after we did everything. I didn't expect them to do anything with them because here in America, well, just here in general, if we get something new, we don't, we just, we don't think twice about it. It's like, oh yeah, we got something new. Let's start using it. And they took those speakers out. They were still in the box. And we prayed over those speakers. We prayed over them and we asked God to use them. And we dedicated them to the Lord and everything. And it was just, it was. It was humbling. It was very humbling. It was amazing. I just, I couldn't. It, it makes you, we got all this equipment here at church, and we are beyond blessed to have all of it. You know, we're, they don't, they have just audio in there, and they have a projector. And, had. Had, well, they still have it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and they're happy with that. They, and they, they could have nothing, and they, they'd be fine with it. So it's, it was, it was. That, w that made me think twice of, you know, are we really, are we using this to better enhance ourselves or are we using it for the glory? So let me take you through how we got them on the wall. So this is how they arrived. They're cages. They're cages because one of the things that Pastor Timothy wanted was he wanted to have them where they would be able to be locked onto the wall. So they're basically boxes. That's one, that's the other one. And they came on a bike like that. And that's when they were fitting them in. And that, that ladder is not a strong ladder. So to have two people on that ladder is probably not um, safe. But they did it anyway. That was when they were drilling, in, drilling the holes. Pastor Timothy was a little nervous about that. And that's how it's plugged in. Bare wire. And it was two wires. It's t held together with plastic. Saran wrap. Yeah, plastic wrap, saran wrap. Um, but they're on the wall. So, and they're not going anywhere. And when he went to... Cause that, cause it swings open, so it. Whenever we put them up there, the door was coming open. So the guy took, he cut, a, he cut the red part off right there, and he tied it shut. So, but there, and that's the the other thing with them being like that is if they do an outreach, or wherever they they can take them off the wall and take them out. So now they have those two speakers on the wall for them. And whenever we put, whenever we started using them, whenever I was testing the system, they were just so blown away that it, what a difference speakers make. In the tone, and, and the, the clear echo in the yeah, concrete and building. It's a, yeah, it's, it's a concrete building. So to hear, to lift, play something, anything through speakers, it just, the echo just goes on forever. So for them to have speakers on the wall elevated and going out, it helps a lot. And when you have the windows open, you can hear around the area. Let's see. Okay. This was at Pastor Timothy's place. Pastor Timothy now lives right across from the church, which is a blessing because he's so close. If anything happens, he's right there. 
but this was when we visited his home and his wife was holding Jeremy and of course I got to hold Jeremy so there were two mom and Jeremy's in the room and uh, that was a blessing to see the baby. Um, they had had twin babies and one of the babies died shortly after birth so they were left with the one son um, and of course they have Joylene. Joylene took this picture of us and I think she did a pretty good job. I think she snapped about 20 of them. At least. But anyway, um, Pastor Timothy was in their kitchen and he's cooking and I thought he was cooking something for his wife so that she could have something, you know, being a new mom and all. He made something for all of us. So we had to eat. Of course we had eaten already at the hotel, but now we're eating again. But, you know, it was such a blessing to see their home. It's bigger than the home when we, we were there last time. Um, they have an extra room, a better kitchen, and it was just a blessing to be in their home. I don't mind eating again, so it was fine with me. <laughs> I, I'm with you, brother. But he didn't take a picture of that. One thing I would like to share, and I'm going to just interject this for because I can. I had two real blessings, well, a number of blessings, but two blessings while we're in Kenya I would like to share with you. One was Pastor Timothy. When Mary and I were there, and uh, for the five years I, I pastored at Wall Baptist Church, P Timothy was one of my better translators. It was he and uh, Sam. Unfortunately, I never got fluent enough in Swahili to preach, so I would always use a translator. And Timothy was always willing. Timothy's father is or currently or was a pastor of an indigenous Baptist church in Kenya. And uh, he was just a wonderful young man. And to see the man that Timothy has become as pastor of Udawala Baptist Church is a real blessing. The other blessing that I received is standing right next to me this morning. It was nothing that Matthew was asked to do that he didn't just dig right in with a smile on his face and get to work. Thank you. I especially when he got those beakers. Yeah. I never saw him smile so big in my whole life. But, uh, <laughs> there he is again. There he is. He's carrying them out. They wanted a picture of me carrying those speakers. I don't know why. They think I can't carry anything. That was when we were going to the outreach. Yeah, so we put those speakers up. We took them right back down. So that's okay, though. They have a lot of miles on them. Yes, already. This is at the outreach. It was the last three or four days we were in Kenya. The rain didn't stop. That is uh, setting up the outreach. It was set up and torn down every day. There's this, this is Elias putting the banner upside down. That there is a uh, storage container behind the sign there and uh, they will cut doors and windows into a storage container and use it as little shops for the Kenyans to sell their, their goods. The building behind it is obviously a substantial block building, but we had permission to, to meet there for three or four days. Every day, set up, tear down. One day, Elias is putting the Udawala Baptist Church sign up, upside down. Nobody's telling them. We're all laughing. And eventually, Susan, his wife, spilled the beans. Yeah, yeah. That was us setting up. Uh, they use, that same ladder that they used to put the speakers up, they used to get up there. And there's a pretty big gap. And this, his name's Clinton. He was, like, starting to go up there. And then he was looking down like, and then Mr. Evans right there, he's the one that ended up doing it. He, we put the two speakers that um, we gave them uh, up on top of the, that red thing right there. You can see them on top of the container. I'm in my glory back there. I look very boring compared to the rest of them. 
You can see the mud that was there. This is from my point of view. And, and normally when we do stuff around here... That's James in the uh, checkered shirt, one of the deacons of the church. So, whenever we normally do stuff around here, we make sure that the ground's dry and everything. Now they, this is right when it stopped raining. So the ground's all muddy. And they still... They still wanted to do it, so we did it. And when we were done, everything was muddy, but glory be to God. Amen. They were coming out of the small shops. And just the yeah, the, these people we didn't even know, and they just started coming out of the shop and praising God. We took... A about 3,000 tracks in Swahili and English with us. Mary and many of the uh, church members were handing out tracks to the people passing by. No one threw it on the ground. Everyone took it home and you can assume read it. If you can see that gold roof building in the back, there were two or three women out on their balconies dancing away with the music and they stood out there and listened as pastors preached. And it was such a blessing that so many people stopped to listen and, and pay attention. Um, one of the ladies from the church, we were giving out tracts right in that area. She went around the corner on the main drag and was giving out tracts there. Uh, from what we understand, after the last outreach, four people came into the church and they have since joined the church and there were many inquiries about the school because we passed out tracks with information about the school and the church. So it was a blessing. It was, you know, rainy and it was, but we did it and God blessed it. My, correct me if I'm wrong, Matthew, but there is another, they're having another outreach at the end of this month. The end of, yeah, the end of June through like July 1st and 2nd. So be in prayer about that too yeah. this was the second day this is the day you preached yeah. every day someone else had the opportunity to preach Pastor Timothy I'm going to play that again so we can hear him dear John that you have come to hear us today that was the last day of the outreach And I put this picture, this is the last Sunday we were here. And I, the reason why I put this picture, I wanted to show you that both speakers are on the wall. And we used the other, the other, they had, they did have one speaker and then they had a powered speaker um, that was given to a church that in New Jersey that Russ and Mary were, mission, or they were missionaries through. And we, those two are used as monitors, basically. Um, so, yeah. And this is during the service. It's the uh, baby dedication. This, yeah, this, this, uh, this particular Sunday, which was the last Sunday we were there, was uh, we did a baby dedication. And Mr. Russ... Uh, delivered the message that day too. S spoke about Hannah and her desire to have a son, Samuel, and turning the ch child over to God. And we stressed the point that we're not really dedicating our children, but we're dedicating ourselves to raise our children in the nurture and the admir admonition of God. And it was a very poignant time because as Mary said, Pastor Timothy and his dear wife, Catherine, had just lost the one baby, and here I am holding Jeremy in my arms. So it was a very touching moment. But As you get, you... each parent came up with their child, we presented them with a Bible, and we told them that we were not dedicating their children. We were dedicating them to raise their children in God's word. And we told them everything that they need to know 
about how to raise their children, they can find it in God's word. And this is past Pastor Timothy and Catherine with their baby. Looks like a ball of blot blankets because that's basically what it is. You can share a little bit being a mom. Yeah. Um, when we first saw <clears throat> Jeremy, he had on a flannel, a long sleeve, long pants outfit. He had a receiving blanket wrapped around him and then this heavy blanket wrapped around that. And I'm holding him and I'm unwrapping him so I could see him. And I said to her, why do you wrap them up so tight, you know, with so many blankets? She says, well, aren't you cold? And I'm like, no. <laughs> it was like between 70 and 80 degrees while we yeah. were there the whole time. But as Russ said, it was raining and it was damp and they don't want their children to get sick, so they wrap them up. While we were there, person. while we were there, we were able to assist Timothy and Catherine with some finances for their drugs, for Catherine's drugs as a result of pregnancy and the baby's medication needs. And also we were able to, to supply a visit to an opt optometrist and a set of prescription glasses for someone who lost theirs. Uh, some ministries we did not get to participate in that we had mentioned, I believe to you, that we were looking forward to. We were not able to get up into the tea fields to the feeding program. Why? Because the road washed out. We were not able to get out to the Maasai with the Bibles. We were going to give them Swahili Bibles, and I'll tell you more about that, because the government had, had leveled their man, manyata, their village. It was at the end of the airport. There's a dispute between the Maasai people who are herders and migrate, and the uh, transportation board or whoever runs the airport, they got bulldozers out, leveled their houses, leveled their church, and just drove away. And the rain and the mud, we just couldn't get out there. We left Bibles for them. We took the Bibles up to uh, Pastor Patero and gave them to him in his home. But uh, what was I going to go back and cover? That was, you know, we had to rearrange because of God's schedule for us. We make our plans, but God guides our footsteps. That is a picture. Mr. If, Wesley, you remember being up there. Well, this time it was Timothy and Matthew. I sat it out. So you don't want to go up that ladder? No. But uh, we want to share a little bit about some needs that the church mentioned. I'm not going to mention any numbers if you're interested in helping or think the church might be able to assist. But there are needs. One of the needs we mentioned was the classrooms. They're dark. We need to run a power line from the church out to the uh, corrugated metal classrooms. But first, they need to level the ground so they can put the conduit, I'm not an electrician, but the conduit in and run the power line out to the uh, classrooms. Another need is the school. We have been partnering with the Udawalla Baptist Church here at KMBC in Udawalla for a couple years now, and we know that there is a problem there with the school. There just aren't enough students one of the problems being they don't have a vehicle to pick students up, so they only get students that can walk to school. And we didn't put a picture in, but there is a school very close by that was built after they started Udawala Baptist Schools. There's, what would they say, a thousand in the, yeah. the big blue building? Five story uh, like four school or five. building over a thousand students and they, they have about 14 buses to just go around. So we're, we're praying that somehow the Lord will provide wheels so they can pick students up. And the other need is to complete the second floor there. They, they, they need to 
complete the second floor, their desire has varied at times between putting a clinic up there or a, uh, uh, a facility where visitors could stay, but let's say a room and a small kitchenette or something. But now they are thinking we need permanent classrooms. So they are looking to finish that second floor where you see Matthew there, that is to be a stairway. That's, that's, that would be the entrance to the second floor. And basically around where this window is will be where the stairs go down. There won't be a way to get to the second floor from the inside, it would all be outside. This was the day we were leaving and oh. Sam came to see us and his friend Evelyn was with him and they hadn't had breakfast so we sat with them while they had breakfast and we had chai with them and the waitress took this picture of all of us and Evelyn and Sam were heading out pretty quickly they had to go to a funeral but they did take time to spend some time with us and that was the last day from there we went over to Elias and Susan's and we kind of hung out with them for the rest of the day until it was time for us to go to the airport. But we had such a blessed time while we were there. Um, one thing, one of the pastors, I think it was Pastor Timothy said to Matthew, when you come back, don't forget to bring your wife and your children. And he says, I don't have a wife. He says, well, if you come back in two years, I told them that. Um, yeah. I said, you remember Audrey, right? I said, that's... She's hard that's, to forget. That's, that's, uh, that's, because I, I showed him a picture of Savannah. And I was like, that's Audrey's daughter. Oh, mother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> but I... We almost forgot there are, we have two visitors this morning. Would you like to introduce our visitors? Yes, I'll be right back. While we were there, um, every t like Russ said, every time Matthew was asked to do something, he just did it. And it was such a blessing. Um, our desire is to go back in 2020. And I know Matthew's desire would be for a lot of the young people in the church to come with us. Um, anyone that wants to, as long as you have a passport, we can help you get your visas to go along. As our son Jeremy says, Mom, someday you're going to fill the whole plane with people, and wouldn't that be a blessing? As I said, you know, they were asking about the people that went with us last time. Um, one of Russell's doctors and her husband and their two children are praying about coming and they're watching us today on Facebook so Mandy keep praying you know we want you guys to come with us and we're going to open it up I think to other churches as well because oh yes these are our friends yes they all got Hawaiian shirts African Just shirts African. Hawaiian I'm thinking Come on, go Mama. back to Hawaii. No, they all got, Amelda made them for them. And she measured the shirts that were on the puppets. And then she made those for them. And it was so much fun. So they're going to come back maybe next time when we go. Or maybe we'll take two other ones so we can get a whole bunch of African shirted puppets. <laughs> But it was a blessing. It really was. Okay, if you, if you have any, over, as usual. Yeah. Oh, I got it right here. One thing we need. Okay, you want to take it down? You can tell me. Just, just wait a minute. There was one person who was really instrumental and has been instrumental in our outreach to Uduala. And this person wasn't able to go back with us in 2018. Wesley Rowe, you have been such a, excuse me for being getting emotional here. You've been such a blessing to Mary and I being our landlord. 
and just your love and support for the Kenyan people. Uh, Miss Imelda and Brother Elias shipped something for you. Matthew, would you present the present, please? Thank you very much, Wesley. Let's give him a hand. When I, when I said Imelda, I kind of told him what's in the package, but thank you so much. I'm, I'm going to close in prayer. If you have any questions, Mary and I are around here, please flag us down. If you're interested in 2020, Lord willing, we are going back, and if you want to be included, we'll put you on a list and keep you informed of in developments. Anything you want to say in closing? Father God, we thank you for this opportunity this morning to share our hearts, Father. Father, you have children all around the world, Father, from Kenya to Kenley, Father, every place in between, Father. But we all need to know Jesus Christ, Father. Father, help us to overlook differences in personality, difference in culture, anything, Father, because Jesus Christ died for us all on the cross, Father. Anyone who come, will come to him, Father, will be made righteous in your sight, Father. Father, give us the courage to go a little further, to go out of our comfort zone and be used in a mighty way for you, Father. Our talents are indeed small, but our God is great. Father, magnify our talents, use us for your service. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much, Kenley Missionary Baptist Church. We're going to close out the service with an invitation hymn. And um, I don't think we should ever close the service without asking um, if there's anybody that has any needs or anybody that wants to accept Jesus Christ today. This altar is here for you. Um, you know what your problems are or what um, maybe your family members' problems are. You know what you need to lay before the Lord and whether or not you've laid it before him in a way that you should have. We've got a lot going on in our lives, but we always need to make time for Jesus. We always need to make time to talk to him and get ourselves right with him because when you walk out that door, you don't know when you'll take your last breath. And, um, when I take mine, I know where I'm going to be. I'm going to be in the presence of Jesus. I'm going to be with the Lord. <clears throat> I want everybody to have that assurance. Um, so if you would, closing him. And Please rise. Give me faith.
Please go right ahead. Lord God, we just come to you now. We thank you so much for giving us the, uh, the, the strength and the words. And Lord, we're, we're lacking. And we know that uh, you take the weak and make them strong. And Lord, we just pray that um, no matter what uh, situation that you've allowed us to be in, Lord, or that we've gotten ourselves in, that it can be used for your glory. And Lord, uh, also I pray that uh, Pastor Search Committee will come together and, and feel the love and prayers of every one of us in this body, Lord, as we, uh, we support and and encourage and, and lift up and, and just um, search for your will, Lord, and, and for the people who are who are serving on that committee, Lord, that they can find the, the man that you have uh, planned to, to be here to lead us, Lord. Lord, we just pray that uh, no matter who is selected, that we just put our faith and, and trust and in, in everything into you, Lord, that we know that you're the one that will be here um, guiding us and showing us the way in everything we do. Help us to never forget to pray over all things, Lord, um, even the littlest thing. If we bring it to you, we know that uh, you can use... Um, even the smallest things. Lord, we just lift you up and pray that you guide this church, Lord, everybody in it as we go outside in the community and uh, tell people of your wondrous love and, and blessings in our lives. Lord, you truly are amazing, and we don't deserve half of what you've given us. Lord, we don't deserve anything. We, we deserve um, what we get, and your grace and mercy is more than anything we'll ever understand. We just lift you up. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <laughs> 